Oh man. I hate buying groceries. It's slow and annoying. If only there was a way to make it faster. Hmm. Let's see. If every item in the store has a name, I can put all the names next to each other in a long string forming a text. Then if I say that the items in my list are patterns, then this is a pattern matching problem. And I can use something like the Boyer Moore or the KMP algorithm. So my first item is chicken. Let's start from the beginning of the store and go through every element until I find some chicken. Now for the second item, I need to go back to the beginning. And I need to go through every element until I find the second item. Hmm, that's not really performant. There must be a better way. Well, Celeste, I got what you need, car. Catch this. I bet. What is this? Oh. Putting multiple patterns in a try? To form a sort of finite state machine? With failure links and output links? Oh. State machines? Tries? KMP? I already made videos about this subject. What an incredible coincidence! It's almost as if I planned everything all along. Wow, thank you, Dragon Slayer! So, the AO Karasik algorithm is a string matching algorithm that allows us to find multiple patterns in a text. It's quite similar to the KMP algorithm, so even though I tried to make this video self-contained, I used some ideas I defined in my previous videos. So if you're having a hard time, please consider watching them. It will 100% help you and will make this video extremely easy to understand. So we have a list of patterns we want to find in a text. When we have a set of strings, we can put them together in a try. When we look at it, a try really is a non-deterministic finite automata. And as we've seen in a previous video, we should be able to turn it into a deterministic finite automaton capable of finding these patterns in a text. But building a DFA requires a lot of transitions. The KMP algorithm taught us that we can replace them with a different type of transitions called failure links. Because when you fail a comparison, instead of going to the next state, you follow the failure link. Failure links are also known as suffix links, because when you fail at a given state, it means that you've seen a few letters and you want to reuse as many of these letters as possible. So a suffix link links to a state that is the longest proper suffix of this string and is also a prefix of another string. Proper suffix means that the word itself is not considered a suffix. Finally, to be complete, we need to add a new type of links called output links. Because when we are searching for multiple patterns, some of these patterns can be substring of other patterns. For example, it is a substring of meat. So if you find the word meat in a text, you should also report the word it. And we do that by creating an output link. The paper describes an algorithm to transform this state machine into an actual DFA and say that it can potentially reduce the number of state transition by 50%. This amount of saving, however, would virtually never be achieved in practice. So, because the benefits are not very clear, I'm going to ignore this part, but be aware that it is a possibility. Okay, now that we know what the AO Karasik algorithm builds, let's see it in action. Suppose that we'll build this finite state pattern matching machine, or whatever you want to call it, and we have the following text, I am eating meat. So we start in state zero with the character I, so we can move to state four. Then we read a white space. So we follow the failure link of state four, leading us back to state zero. If we read a white space, we stay in state zero. So we discard this character and move to the next one, which is an A. Once again, we can't move, so we discard it. Now we are reading an M. We go to stage 1, then we read a white space, so we follow the failure link, we are back in stage 0 and can't move, so we read the next character, which is an E. So we go to stage 2, then we read an A, we go to stage 6, then a T, we go to stage 11, which is the final state. So we report the word it. 
Now we keep going with the letters I and N. We are now in state 17. This state has an output link to state 8, so we report the word in. Then we read a G, we go to state 18 and report the word eating. Now we read a white space, so we follow the failure link. In state 0, we can't move forward, so we discard the white space and move on to M, E, A, and T. So we end up in state 13 and report the words meet and eat. And we are done. In a single pass, we were able to find the words eat, in, eating, and meet, which is pretty good. Okay, now that we know how to use it, let's learn how to build it. There's two phases to build this state machine. First, we build the try, and then the failure links. The construction of the output links is done during both of these steps. There are several ways to achieve this, so I'm going to explain it at a pretty high level using this graphical representation, without going too much into the details. I've decided not to include an implementation of this algorithm in this video, but I will do it in another video. Step 1. Building the try. There's nothing really difficult about building a try. We start by creating an empty root node. Then we insert the words one by one. Each new letter creates a new arc and a node. And I suggest that each node should have a list of output words it represents. Final states should have the word they represent, while all the nodes should have an empty list. This will be useful to create the output links. Now let's build the failure links. You know, I like the name failure links because it's what you take when a comparison fails, but I think suffix link is actually the better name because it tells us what it really does. You see, each node represents a string and the suffix link of a node points to a different node which represents its longest proper suffix. For example, the node 10 represents the string MEA. Its longest proper suffix is EA which is represented by the state 6. So the suffix link of 10 points to 6. So to build the suffix link of a node, we need to find the longest proper suffix of the string it represents in the try. And to find the longest proper suffix, we take this string, remove its first character, and simulate the automaton with the remaining letters. So in this example, in state 0, we read an E. We move to state 2, then we read an A, and we end up in state 6. So the suffix link of the node 10 points to 6. But we are not going to simulate the automaton for the whole string every time. When we add a new character, we can reuse the work we've just done. In this example, to find the fellow link of the state 14, we need to simulate the automaton for the string it. But because we already did it for the string EA, we can just use the failure link of state 10, which leads to state 6, and see what happens when we read a T. In state 6, reading a T leads us to state 11, so the suffix link of state 14 points to state 11. To find the suffix link of a state, we need suffix links of previous nodes. You see, each node has a depth which is the number of arcs from the node to the root. This depth also corresponds to the number of characters in the string represented by the node. So if D is the depth of a node, then the string has D characters. And the longest proper suffix has at most D minus one characters. So if we simulate the automaton with this suffix, we may reach a node of depth D minus one which means that to find the suffix link of a node of depth d, we need to know about all the nodes of depth d minus 1 or smaller. So to find the suffix links, we are going to process nodes level by level, like a breadth first search. Let's now talk about output links. You see, when we find a fellow link of a node, we need to copy the content of its output property. For example, when we are looking for the fellow link of state 12, we follow the fellow link of state 7, which leads us to state 4. And after reading an N, we end up in state 8. So we create the suffix link, and because the output property of state 8 is not empty, we copy it to the output property of state 12. Now look at the state 17. When we look for the fellow link, we end up in state 12. And because this state has a non-empty output property, 
we copy its content to the output property of state 17. So this state has an output link to state 8. And voila, you know everything you need to know to build the AO Karasic state machine. So let's recap everything we've learned by building all the failure links and output links of this try. The failure link of state 0 points to itself. Now, if you remember, we need to go level by level. So the node of depth 1 have empty proper suffix. So the suffix links of the nodes of depth 1 lead to state 0. For the nodes of depth 2, we'll start from left to right with state 5. To find the suffix link of state 5, we follow the one of state 1, which leads us to 0. In state 0, when we read an E, we end up in state so the fellow link of state 5 is state 2. For state 6, we follow the fellow link of state 2. We are back in 0. After reading an A, we stay in state 0. So the suffix link of state 6 points to 0. For state 7, we follow the fellow link of state 3. We go to 0. And after reading an I, we are now in state 4. For state 8, we follow the fellow link of state 4. We go to 0, and after reading an N, we stay in 0. Now let's continue with the nodes of depth 3. For state 9, we follow the failure link of state 5, which leads to state 2. In state 2, if we read an E, we follow the failure link. Now in state 0, after reading an E, we go back to state 2. So the failure link of state 9 points to the state 2. For 10, we follow the failure link of state 5. In 2, we read an A, we go to state 6. For 11, we follow the failure link of state 6. In 0, after reading a T, we are in state 3. For 12, we follow the failure link of state 7. In state 4, if we read an N, we end up in state 8. And because the output list of state 8 is not empty, we also create an output link from state 12 to state 8. Now for the next level. For state 13, we follow the link of state 9. In state 2, if we read a T, we follow the failure link. In 0, after reading a T, we end up in state 3. For 14, the failure link of state 10 is 6. And after reading a T, we move to state 11. Because 11 has an output, we create an output link. For 15, we follow the failure link of 11. In state 3, reading an I leads to 7. For 16, we follow the failure link of 12. In state 8, after a Y, we go to 0. In 0, after a Y, we stay in 0. Now for 17, we follow the suffix link of 15. Now in state 7, after reading an N, we are in state 12. And because 12 has an output link pointing to 8, we create an output link from state 17 to state 8. Finally, for the state 18, we follow the failure link of state 17, which leads us to state 12. In state 12, after reading a G, we need to follow the failure link. Now in state 8, when reading a G, we follow the failure link. And finally, in state 0, after reading a G, we stay in the state 0. So the failure link of 18 points to 0. Okay. That took a little bit of time, but we did it. We now have a good understanding of the Heo Karasic algorithm. So the next step is to implement it, and we will do that in the next video. So subscribe and see you in part two.